Thank you for considering DevExpress ASP.NET controls and MVC extensions for your software development needs. In this demo, I'll show you how easy it is to use the feature complete DevExpress ASP.NET grid, including how you can populate it with very large datasets and enable its countless data shaping options without writing a single line of code. In the next few minutes, you'll discover that DevExpress makes it incredibly easy to create blazing fast and highly responsive data-driven web applications, regardless of dataset size or information complexity. So let's get started. First, we'll create a new web application. Then we'll add a data layer by right-clicking on our application in the Solution Explorer window and choosing Add New Item. Select the data category and add an ADO.NET entity data model. Generate it from a database and click Next. Here, we'll make a new connection to our SQL Server and select the data for our FMR demo. FMR is short for Fair Market Rent, and it contains information about housing rentals. Click Next, and here we'll select the Table and Views objects and click Finish. This will generate our Entity Framework model and bring up our designer. In it, we have two tables, Area and Rent Info. We also have a view that combines the two. Next, we'll right-click on our application and add a new form. Then from the design view, we'll add a link server mode data source by double-clicking on it from our toolbox. On the right, we can set up some properties for this source. First, we'll set the context type name to the FMR demo. Then we'll set the table name to the area rent info view. Now we'll add the grid view to our form and point it to our data source. From here, all we have to do is make adjustments to its columns and properties, and then we'll be all set. First, I'll open the Columns Editor from our Smart Tag menu, remove the OID column, and move the Population column down to the bottom. Then I'll enable Grouping and Filtering. I'll set the Width property to 100% so that it fills and resizes in each browser. Then set the page size count to 20 to display 20 records at a time and set its drop down visibility to true so that we can see it on the bottom of our grid. Let's run this now and check out our grid's performance. The first thing to note is the amount of data we're bound to. There are almost 650,000 records here and our grid still sorts through the data and performs operations at lightning speeds. And users have the ability to filter through records to pinpoint data. So for this example, someone could easily find all of the two bedrooms available for Los Angeles. So without writing any code, we have a grid that is capable of performing complex functions quickly and easily. Let's look at how we can customize this a bit more to make it easier for end users to read. I'll return to Visual Studio and open up the Columns Editor again. This time, I'll select the Rent column and change its Display Format string to C, so that it displays a currency value. And I'll select the population and set it to 0, 0, so that the population displays commas for values over 1,000. Next, I'll select the Bedrooms column and change it to a combo box dropdown. Inside the dropdown, we want to display text for the bedrooms available. So I'll click on the Items property and open the Items Collection Editor. Here, I'll add five items. The first item's value is zero, and its text will read Studio. The next item is one, and it will read One Bedroom. The same goes for three bedrooms and four bedrooms. Next, we'll make some filtering adjustments. First, I'll set the Show Header Filter button to True. This gives each column a drop-down button to display unique values. But having this drop-down in certain columns can be redundant, so let's adjust those columns. First, I'll select the Year column and then set its Allow Auto Filter button to False and switch its Header Filter mode to Checked List. This will allow users to choose multiple years from the drop-down menu. I'll do the same thing for the Bedrooms column as well. And then I'll remove the filter bar for the Rent and Population columns. The last thing we'll do is create a footer to display summaries. So we'll need to set the Show Footer property to True 
and then click on Total Summary. Here we add two summary items. The first one will show a total count for the state column, and the second one will show the average rent for the whole data set. I also want to create a group summary so that when we group by state, we'll show the average rent. Now let's run this again and look at our adjustments. Now end users can choose the bedroom size from our drop down menu and filter information accordingly. They can do the same thing to pinpoint the years they're looking for. So here we have a user that can easily find the average rent for the last two years for homes in New York. They can also group by each state and the average rent is displayed for easy viewing. Users can also perform further filtering functions and as you can see, the grid remains lightweight and fast. As you just saw, it doesn't take much to get started using the grid. Download a free trial today and try it out for yourself. Let's see what develops.